Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got some fun DIY crafts for you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we are working on DIY farmhouse fall crafts. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, it's a little different, but it's fun. I'm gonna use two of these pumpkins from Dollar Tree. All right, and first thing I'm going to do is just get everything off of there. I'm using my industrial heat tool to you know, melt that glue, of course, and get those labels off of there. Now, this project, I know as you're watching it, you're going to be like, I could buy that in like 10 minutes online, and you could. But why do that when you can take two to three hours to make it for yourself? <laughs> Once that's off on one side, I'm just going to kind of do a silhouette shape about an inch in on the back side of the pumpkin because I want to take and cut that out with my jigsaw. And in order to do that, I'm just making three random pilot holes because I don't know exactly where I'm going to need to, you know, have access to move my jigsaw in and out of those holes. It's mainly just to kind of get your jigsaw started. You go from one of the holes so that you can get to that outer perimeter line. So here I am. I've got it kind of clamped onto my table, starting on through one of the holes and just cutting out that you know, silhouette shape that I drew. And again, I just kind of followed the design of the pumpkin, you know, to make my shape here. It was really easy. And like I said, about an inch in. And I'll just kind of show you the process here. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to make one of these for a while. So I'm like, why not try it out? Okay, once it's done, you just pop out the inside and then you've got kind of this outline. And what I'm going to do is layer this on the bottom piece. Now, you don't have to do this next part, but I wanted it just to be a little bit deeper. Okay, what I'm going to do is trace my opening here onto that bottom piece. This is optional. And I found this burr at Ace Hardware. Um, it's for a Dremel tool, as you see here. It's a really deep cut bladed burr. And I'm literally just coming in in the center of where I marked that outline. And it just takes took me about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, and I'm just basically scooping out that inner portion there to kind of make a deeper bowl shape. Again, you probably don't really have to do this, but I wanted it a little bit deeper, okay? So, and you just take the time with it. It gets awfully dusty with this kind of MDF wood. You can see me, I'm having to blow off the dust and stuff. But it's actually kind of fun to do, you know, and you're just shaping it out and, uh, and you know, hollowing it out just a little bit. I think I went down about, I think this pumpkin is about an inch in width. And so I probably went down about, oh, almost a half inch, not quite. And then once I get the depth I want, you know, I just kind of come in and smooth it a little bit with this tool. And then I will actually smooth it even more so with just by hand with, you know, a piece of, you know, fine grit sandpaper to really smooth it out. But I look how dusty everything's getting, but I don't know. It was kind of fun. I'm playing in the dust and tools and, you know, it was just a fun crafty time. Now, once it's all done, like I said, I just did it off camera. I used a fine grit sandpaper. I went from like a 120 to a 220 and just sanded it by hand, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and use some wood glue and glue the silhouette frame on top of the bottom portion. Once I get my desired amount of glue, of course, put the two together and I want to go ahead and clamp it. Once I put the clamps on, I think it sat about two hours. I think directions say at least a half hour before you move on, but I was doing something else, so they sat about two hours. Now, I was concerned about the inside, whether I needed to seal it, and so I went and did a little bit of Googling, of course, and everything said to use like a water base, like a polyacrylic sealer, because we're going to add a candle inside of this, and I was concerned for safety reasons, you know, of like the heat and the wood. And most everything I read didn't really touch on that subject. It really made it like you needed a sealer just because if you wanted to add more candle wax later or take that candle wax out, you know, it would be harder to remove because that wax would get into the porousness of the wood. So it said to seal it. I did a couple of coats and I just let it sit overnight. Now, once we've sealed the inner portion of that area, right now I'm using Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color terracotta. Y'all know it's like my most used color in the fall season. And I'm just painting, you know, the top, the 
around the sides and the back. I'm not doing anything on that inner bowl portion, okay? And then I'll distress it off camera just with some sandpaper. But you could leave it natural if you wanted and it looks more rustic that way, okay? All right, show you here what it looks like when it's all distressed. So this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring back in that polyacrylic sealer, and I'm going to seal all of it, all around the outer edges, top, bottom, sides, whatever. And I'm even going to, like, come on the inside and do an extra couple of coats on the inside. It's not going to hurt anything, and I'm just making sure that I flip and twist this to get into any recesses, especially like where the the two pumpkins come together. You know, if there's any undercuts in there or anything, I want to make sure I just seal that very nicely. Here's everything all sealed, and I use the matte sealer. I'm just kind of a matte girl, and I was going to use these candles from Dollar Tree, but it wasn't the right shade, and then I went to Dollar Tree, and I'm like, I'll get the white candles. I'm like, eh, I really wish I had clear. And then I turned the corner and saw these. This is bourbon barrel pumpkin smell. It's really nice. And I was concerned on how deep my bowl was. But when I saw these candles, I mean, look, it's the same thickness as my bowl. So I knew it was going to work right. The same nice shade. So I thought that would be pretty. And then I thought, well, I can even reuse the wick. They're the right height for my bowl. So like everything worked out. I grabbed three because I wasn't sure how many I was going to use. But in the end for this, I only needed two. So the process is really easy. I've just kind of got a light simmer boil on my stovetop. I'm adding the candles in there and I'm just going to you know, let those simmer and melt. I let them sit a little too long. I was doing something else because when I went to take the wicks out, the wick kind of came loose from the little metal thing. Here, I'm pulling it out and there it is. The wick came out of the metal thing. Easily fixable. All you need to do is just take some pliers and kind of open up that metal thing, put the wick back in and squeeze it back shut. But I'm like, eh, I don't feel like it. I already have some wicks in a candle making kit. So I just went ahead and pulled those out. I kept the other ones because I can reuse them. But I was like impatient. So I'm going ahead and just putting my own wicks in there for now. Using a little sticky thing that comes with the kit to stick them into the bottom. But again, you could reuse those if that happens to you if you let it simmer too long. Just some pliers, like some needle nose pliers will open that little metal Thing in the center where the wick goes, stick the wick back in and pinch it shut again. Now I'm going ahead and, and adding my melted wax here and then I'm going to let my wicks lay over the stick until it sets. Once that wax is set up, I can go ahead and reduce my wicks down to how short I want them and then that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I have a kit for you from craftingwithkimber.com. Now this kit, you can buy each of these pieces separately or together. If you buy them all together in one kit, all the sizes, it comes with all these pieces for the kit, okay? And I love that you have three different sizes. Comes with this cute little crow and a tag. Everything sets upright. Or you can buy each of the sizes separately. Like if you only want the small size or the medium size. And you can see all the pumpkins stand up. They're made from half inch wood. Or you could buy the large size. Is however you want it. There's a little scroll bar on the right. And you just scroll down to whatever one you want to order. In today's project, I'm going to use the middle size pumpkin here. And then for the accessories part, I'm going to use the tag, one of the cute little wonky buttons, and a couple of the leaves. 
All right, I'll save the other pieces for something else. I'm gonna use this Waverly chalk paint in the pumpkin and this chalk paint in the sage. Waverly antique wax mixed with water, little Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. And we're gonna start on our pumpkin. I'm gonna use the Waverly antique wax mixed with water or you could use just a brown paint. I'm gonna use that pumpkin shade. I hadn't tried this shade before. I've seen a, you know, a few other YouTube crafters use this pumpkin shade. It's a little bright, but when I sand it down, it gets better and I'm just painting painting the outer sections because that intersection is going to get covered up of course I will paint the back to make it all finished off with the Waverly wax and that pumpkin shade then I'm painting my leaves with kind of this sage color it's not fully mixed but it gives me kind of a light and dark variation in the green I didn't mix the paint up really well so I would have that variation and then I'll use the drop cloth paint for the tag front and back in case the tag gets seen a little bit and then just about an inch in on the middle section of the pumpkin not worried about the back side because I'm going to glue that down. All right, so this is what it looks like. I sanded everything off camera. I left a little section here, as you see, and I painted a little block because even though the pumpkin stands up, it's going to get a little top heavy with what I'm going to do with it. So I painted a little block we can glue on later on the back to make it stable. Now I'm taking that drop cloth paint mixed with water and a fan brush. I tap it in the paint, wipe off the excess onto some paper, and then I tap the brush to get little splatters. And then I'm coming in with some brown paint and I'm doing the same thing. So I have a little bit of mixed mixture of kind of white and brown splatters on my extra little pieces here okay I like to do this just gives it a little texture looking here all right and I will go ahead and do the same on the back side just to make it look all nice and finished you know I sell these at craft shows so I want them to look nice on the back as well Okay, and then once that's done, I'm tracing that center segment of our pumpkin just onto some paper to make a pattern, all right? And then I'm going to come in about a quarter inch in, and I'm going to redraw that perimeter of that pumpkin segment, okay? This is optional. You don't have to do it. I just like to do this. And then, of course, I'm going to cut that center segment out, all right? So I've got a little bit of a smaller pattern here. I'm going to do the middle section with a little bit of fabric. You could just cover it with paper, whatever you want. Now, I've got a old sweater I found at Goodwill with a stain on it, so I don't mind cutting it up. And I'm going to use a little piece of this uh, sweater to cut out. You could use regular fabric. You could use some, you know, um, fuzzy fabric, whatever you want. I'm going to just, like I said, use this old sweater I don't want it too thick, so I just kind of cut that sleeve down a little bit. I'm just using one piece of the sweater. I thought about doing two pieces to make it thick, but sided just one layer of that sweater. And then on the piece I just used, the pattern piece, I came in again about a quarter inch, redrew that perimeter, and I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to use it onto some fleece here. Now, I pinned it to double fleece i folded the fleece because i thought i might want to make this part two layers but in the end i only use one layer because two layers was just too thick so i'm using that piece cutting out that fleece decided what i want to do and i'm going to go two layers i'm going to use beacon fabritac glue so those of your gluers we're going to layer the fleece down and then your material on top so go ahead and glue both of those pieces if you're going to do this route. If you're just going to use paper, go ahead and glue that down. I'm going to go ahead and glue the fleece to the sweater material first, all right? And then I'm going to take it to my sewing machine off camera, and I'm going to just sew around that perimeter. All right, this is what it looks like sewn. It kind of gives us a nice rustic look because all those edges kind of frayed a little bit. And then I'm going to glue that down to the center portion of our pumpkin. And I'm going to let those edges just lay up, all right? Now, I printed this onto some fabric, and I'm going to insert a little bit of an old video so you can see how I do it. This works really great. I have a little cheapy inkjet printer. It's about $70, and I just print it onto some fabric here. And I'm going to show you the process of how I do that with just a plain piece of copy paper, and I'm going to use the spray adhesive on it, and I'm just going to spray a light coat all the way down the paper. And then I usually use like a muslin fabric uh, and then I fold it in half so that I can, you know, manipulate it easier onto the paper and then just lay out that fold and then smooth it onto the paper. Now, you don't want any sticky 
paper around the edges of your fabric left or it'll stick to your roller. So you want to cut that off. And then, of course, you want to cut off that extra fabric. Okay. I've tried this technique with taping around the edges. That worked for a while, but then I found like the spray adhesive method like this works wonderful. So I've got my fabric trimmed and now I'm going to just trim off that piece of paper. Once you're done trimming, the paper might not be perfectly straight. That's okay. And then just run it through your printer how you normally run it through and then print out your quotes onto it and it works wonderful. But I found that this method works well with an inkjet printer. I don't know about laser, you just have to try it. So now what I'm doing is I just took my tag I'm going to use here from the kit and I traced it onto the back of the area of the quote I want and I'm just cutting that piece of quote fabric out. <laughs> Does that make sense? And then I'm gonna actually go ahead and cut it a little bit shorter all the way around so it kind of matches that center segment we just did. I love the wonky shapes of the tag and the pumpkin and stuff here. This is what that's going to look like. And then I want it to match that segment. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with a little piece of fleece here. I'm going to cut it to fit the back of my tag, but cut it a little bit shorter all the way around. Just so the edges of the fabric can kind of lay off around the edges of that fleece. If you're a gluer, go ahead and glue this on. I'm going to go ahead and sew around the edges again off camera with my sewing machine. And this is what that looks like. Got that little edging there. And then I'm just going to take my fingernail and kind of fray the edges of the fabric there. Cut off kind of any excess strings a little bit. I want a few strings to hang off. And then I'll go ahead and glue that onto the center of the tag. Just like that. All right. Now I want my fabric to look like the splatter of the pumpkin so i'm taking that brown paint again mixed with water and i'm splattering the fabric it's okay it turns out just fine just make sure you let it dry first and then i'm taking a little stylus tool is what they're called you can get these at dollar tree or any craft section and i'm just adding some little extra dots around the wood area of that middle segment of the pumpkin and i'll take my fabric tack glue and go ahead and glue that on this is what it looks like see doesn't the splattering on that fabric look well with the rest of the pumpkin and, and then of course I splattered the tag as well now I'm going to take some I think this is 18 gauge wire 20 gauge wire gold wire I thought it would look nice with the pumpkin and I'm going to thread it through my two leaves so basically what I'm doing is I thread the wire through one leaf and then I twist it so it's nice and tight twist that wire nice and tight and then I thread that short end back through that leaf and then wrap that around a paintbrush so I can make a little curly cue and smush it onto the front of that leaf. So I hope that's understandable. So I'll try to follow here through the leaf, twist the two wires together nice and tight up against that leaf, take that excess shorter wire back through. You might have to kind of bend that wire up against that leaf and then take and wrap it around the remaining wire around a paintbrush and then smush it against the leaf. All right. And then just kind of smush it in place there, kind of bend the leaves up a little bit. And then that will make it so that our leaves, when we glue that wire down, can kind of stand up off of the pumpkin. So hopefully that's understandable. You don't have to do that all. You can totally just glue your leaves, you know, flat onto the pumpkin if you want. All right. Oh, my phone cord's in frame on the lower right side. I'm sorry. I usually try and kind of tape that out of the way, but I didn't realize it was there. So don't look at it. Even though I told you about it and focused your attention on it, don't look at it. All right. So I glued the wire of the leaves down and I'm gluing a little moss in between to cover the wire and kind of push the leaves upward a little bit. And then I've got this mesh tubing you get from Dollar Tree. I like to tie a knot in it so it's easier to glue. And I'm just kind of gluing that in between the leaves. And I've got some pip berries here and some little acorns off different picks and stuff like that. And I'm going to kind of glue that in between the center of the two leaves as well. Whatever you can find that you want to kind of glue in there. Glue some bigger berries on either side of the leaves here. I thought the orange matched nicely with the orange of the pumpkin. And then some pit berries and beaded things. I don't know. I got this at a garage sale and glue that in. And then I decided I want to add a little more moss kind of down each side here onto the pumpkin. So I'm kind of gluing that in a little bit and a little bit more moss in the center. Just however much you want to put in there. 
give it a rustic look. I decided I wanted one more piece of that mesh tubing under one of the leaves, so I'm gluing that in. And then I've got a couple uh, thin pieces of a twine here. I was only going to start with one bow. I make a little bow here. And then I decided, no, I'm going to bend that in half and glue two bows here. So I make two of these sets of bows with thin twine. So I've got some really cute kind of fluffy on either side. It looks like one bow when it's all complete. And I'm going to glue the little wood tag between those two bows. Glue the little wood button on. Add a little more moss here. Can't get enough moss. And then I decide I'm going to add a little bit more with the drop cloth paint. A couple of little dots. Some fun little additive characteristic to the pumpkin. Like set of three dots in and around the pumpkin on both sides. I'm going to do it up on, you know, down at the bottom, up on both of the leaves, just to kind of give it a little bit more fun and whimsy. You can see that here. And then I'm going to use the Beacon Quick Grip glue to glue my little block to the back. Since I put a lot of stuff on the front, it might be a little top heavy. Glue that onto the back for stability. And then that makes this project complete. Before we move on to the next project, for those of you that watched my last video, if not, I'll have the link in the description box below. You might remember this project I cut using my jigsaw and the words I cut using my X-Tool laser cutter. My friend Kim, craftingwithkimber.com, thought it was so cute that she made a kit for you all for those of you that maybe don't have access to cutting your own pieces. This is the kit. Now within this kit she made it fun because you also have on the right hand side there is a thing that you click on. You can choose three different font styles for that kit. I will have this kit listed in my description box for you all. You're welcome. <laughs> With that said, let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm going to make a cute fall sign. I'm using five of these 18-inch long slat boards you can get from Dollar Tree in their craft section. And I wanted to make a little bit fun, so I cut each of the boards into two pieces. Now, on three of the boards, I made sure I had a six-inch piece. And on two of the boards, I made sure I had an eight-inch piece, okay? Okay. You can see that here. So two eight inch pieces and three six inch pieces. You don't have to do this. You can keep them in one length. And then I wanted to glue them onto a backboard so it would make it easier. The main backboard of the sign is 17 and three quarter inches in length and then nine and a quarter inches tall. All right, and then I cut framing pieces around it. These framing pieces are an inch wide. You could even use paint sticks. Those are an inch wide, those long paint sticks. And I just cut two long pieces to fit my long side of my board and then two short pieces to fit in between the two top and bottom frame pieces. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is just use wood glue to glue my slats to that backboard. And I wanna make sure that I... Um, of course, adding glue to any of the sides of the boards if I need to. Like right in here, see, because I want to hook the two pieces together. So I'm putting glue on the sides and then, of course, on the back of the board pieces. So I hope that makes sense. Because sometimes you only glue on the back, but most of the time you have to glue on the sides as well so that you can hook your next boards to it. 
All right, just moving kind of down the line here, gluing this all on. Now, I did all of this prior to this next little segment I'm going to talk about, and I'll come to that in a minute because I want you to see this process. Once I glue all of this down, I go ahead and clamp it up and down and side to side. I just show you a little bit of clamping here, but I also clamp side to side off camera. All right, now I'm going to talk about this next section for a minute. I showed this to my friend Kim, and she's like, let's make a kit. So... Had I had this kit ahead of time and thought to ask her about it, I wouldn't have done all this. She made a kit for you all, and you can see it here. It is the whole back piece she just scored to make it look like what I just did, and then she cut framing for it and the words. If you want to make your own sign, you also have the option to just order the wood words with the little heart here. Okay, so... I wouldn't have done all of that prior. I would have just used her kit, but maybe you want to create your own back like I did and just have fun with it. And you just want to order the wood words. You have that option. Okay, so let's move on. So using Waverly Antiques Wax mixed with water, I'm going to start staining around my frame pieces. Once they are dry off camera, I just take like 120 grit sandpaper and I just sand them up so they look a little bit distressed. Now I'm going to start in on a painting my woodwards, but I did want to give you another option. If you don't want to you know order any of the wood pieces you're making your own sign but you want to use vinyl I will have a, a PNG printable for you in my description box it goes to my blog or maybe you don't have electronic cutting machine but you still want to have the option of like using carbon paper and the PDF printable that I'll have for you and you can trace it and then paint it in those options will be there for you okay so I wanted to make sure you are set in every direction at all if you want to make this sign now I'm coming in with that same Waverly anti wax and went ahead and stained my little heart and then I'm going to use some Christmas paper actually here because I like the little brown dot and I'm going to take that wooden heart and I'm going to trace it onto the back of that paper and then I'm going to come in just like we did on the last project come in about a you know about an eighth of an inch on here and redraw that heart pattern here and cut that out that way, when I cut it out and set it on my wood, a little bit of that stain perimeter will pop out around the paper. Just gives an added little texture to it. Okay, and then I am going to take my sewing machine and sew around the edges. And this is what it looks like. I did it off camera. All right, and then I'm going to come in with the open end of my scissor blades and scrape around the edges to give it a little bit of rusticness. If you want that sewing look but don't have a sewing machine, you can take like an extra fine Sharpie marker, make little dash lines around the edges. And then I'm going to come in and distress with just some sandpaper around the edges of the heart. And then when I place the paper on there and glue it on there where I scraped along the edges of the paper, it kind of gives it a white silhouette and kind of allows that paper to kind of pop up off the wood which is what I love to have it look like. All right now we're going to take Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth. We're going to use the Dixie Belle chalk paint in terracotta and I'm going to start painting my woodwards. Now I was originally just going to do my woodwards in nothing but the drop cloth but I don't know, it melted too much into the background of my sign. So then I went over it with just some white colored chalk paint. And then I sand it and distress that a little bit. So kind of both colors will pop through. It's kind of got that creamy off-white shade underneath the white. And it actually looks kind of cool and distress looking. Once that's done, I'm going to move on to the background portion of the sign. It's all glued and ready to go. Again, if you have Crafting with Kimber Kit, you're just ready to go. <laughs> and I don't care that there's spacing in between the boards and the layers are up and down. I think that just gives it great texture. So here's where I'm coming in with that terracotta uh, chalk paint and I'm just going to paint the entire board. Now I should have left an inch around the perimeter where I need to wood glue that frame to, but I forgot. And I usually do that because my brain just gets in and like, I've got to paint it. And I forget to sometimes leave the edges clear of paint so that the wood glue adheres better. So I distress it off camera because I want it to look distressed. And then you're going to see the outer perimeter all sanded off in this next frame here. This is what it looks like. And I know it looks funny and like it just, it looks good when it's all put together, trust me. So, and then I did the back too, just so it's nice and finished off. All right, and then I'm going to use, before I put the frame on, some little bitty nails. They're like, oh, half-inch nails, because I wanted to make it look like my little slat boards were 
of course, nailed together like it was fencing or something. I don't know. I just thought it would be fun. I started on the top to add two nails because I was going to do, I wanted to do two nails on each side of the board, but realized my frame's going to cover that top nail. So I don't really need that top nail, uh, you know, on the top and bottom boards, if that's understandable. So everywhere I had like a seam, I added two nails on either side of the board. This is just for fun texture and looks. You don't have to do it but I just thought it would be fun. And my little slat boards and the board underneath is just the right thickness. Now I'm gonna come in with that drop cloth paint mixed with water. You guys, you guys know how I love to do that. And I'm just going to wipe off the excess on paper and then just splatter the back of that sign a little bit. And then before I do my next splatter, I'm coming in with the Waverly Antique Wax. Uh, and then I go over it with brown paint over that because I'm not sure the wax will stay on it well. And I'm just adding some little dark areas to those nails so that they aren't so bright and vivid. And then I come in with the brown paint mixed with water and add some of that splatter. Basically the same paints I just used in our last project. All right, once that's all dry, I'm coming in with that wood glue again, and I'm gonna go ahead and glue my framing around the perimeter. Now, my framing here, once I distress it and stuff, it's pretty light in color, and then I realize I don't really like that. So off camera, I go back in and I add another layer of that uh, Waverly Antique Wax mixed with water to really kind of darken up that frame on the perimeter. And then I just kind of lightly sand it once again. And I thought that looked a little bit better and gave it a, a nicer contrast from the framing to the terracotta color on the back of the board, you know, the center of that board there. And then of course, I want to make sure I clamp everything together. Perfect. And I just let that set overnight. And I, you can see I add a lot of clamps. Once that's done, here's my words. You can see how I distress and sanded them so you kind of see the two color variation. But I still wanted to come in and add a little bit of like inking around the edges. So I'm using my Distress Oxide ink in Vintage Photo, and I'm just kind of inking around the edges of my wood pieces. They give it a little bit more of a rustic kind of stained look and help those letters to pop up a little bit more off of that orange background. This is, you know, optional. You don't have to do that. Then once all that's complete, I'm going to glue my heart into place. I'm going to glue my quote into place. I love how it turned out. Once I change that framing, you can see it looks a little bit darker around it because I walked by it for a day or two and I'm like, what do I not like about this? And I realized the framing was too light. So once I made that darker and it allowed kind of the middle portion, the woodwards and all that to pop up, I liked it a lot better. And then if that isn't enough, I'm going to come in with the shimmer spray. You all know I love. I'll have a link to the Etsy shop down below. It's clear with a little hint of shimmer. She does have different colors. This is the silver one. I'm going to spray it just a little bit in the center and that makes this project complete. So I hope you love the fall projects that I came up with today. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know which project you would love to make right now. If you walked in here for the first time, you're just checking things out and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another project from me. And do me a favor, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. When you walk through difficult times, it's never an easy task. You pray, you cry, you want God to take the situation away, and it often feels like you're left to your own survival in the desert. You long for the bread from heaven or water from a rock. You feel isolated and alone. But in these times, you're not alone. You just need to take a moment and refocus. Take a moment to breathe in and allow God to give you hope, and in this hope, you will find a blessing. If you're struggling to maintain joy, allow yourself to sit back, Reflect that when you faced a tough challenge before, God was with you, beside you, carrying you through it all, and you made it to the finish line. You sometimes have to remember the past to face the present, to allow joy into your future. When you're worried, troubled, and you feel alone, it's then that your mind must choose to stop and focus on what God can provide you in that moment. When you feel a thousand miles from God and everything is falling down around you, 
You must allow this battle to stop raging its war by slowing down to take a moment to focus. Focus on who God is, what He is, and where He is. Allow your eyes to see heaven in the darkness. With God, there is always light. Push past the tears and all that the enemy is clouding your vision with and just breathe. I want you to just take a moment, hear these words, and focus. Begin to allow your ears to hear the beat of your heart. Allow your ears to hear the life that God gave you. Feel each beat. And with each beat, take that breath. And as you take that breath, close your eyes. Allow each breath that God gives you to permeate your soul. Allow His Spirit to flow through your soul. Now, allow your senses to hear the sounds around you. Just hear and feel the sounds of the creation of God all around you. Just be still for a moment. And in that stillness, in that quiet, your focus will find God and He will no longer be so far away. You will no longer feel lonely in the desert place. He holds you. He comforts you. He gives you peace. He will give the very best of what He has to offer to you from His heart to your heart. And that is His hope. Just as God brought you through before, you have the hope in knowing He will do it again. You have the hope in knowing that your distance from Him is not far, but so close to your right side. You have the hope in knowing that He will feed you with His bread of life. You have the hope in knowing that His Spirit will give you water for your thirsty soul. You have the hope in knowing that He will bring you joy for the morning. Don't give up on the hope that God offers you. It will always be there for you. You must just be willing to take that moment to quiet your soul and breathe it in. I thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.